Chris, welcome to Nightbreed. How's things, man? Good, dude. Good. Thanks for having me in. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, I spoke with Leon uh, back in like 2021, I think, around um, career yeah. suicide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but a lot's happened since then, obviously. <laughs> um, but if it's all right, I wouldn't mind going back to the start, just to start us off, because um, you've been there since the beginning, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. So what, Um. yeah, what sparked Orpheus or Orpheus back then, wasn't it, when you got started? Yeah, well, I mean, the long story short is Joao, our original guitarist, and I went to uni together in uh, at La Trobe in Melbourne. Yeah, and cool. on many of our, uh, we're not going to class days, we just talk metal and play guitar and all the all the good things. Yeah. And eventually, it comes to the point where we're like, we should try and make a thing of a band, you know? Like he introduced me to the Mellow Death stuff at least broadly. Um, and at that point, I kind of was just like, oh, man, I really want to play this stuff. I really want to write in this overall style. And mm. then we, you know, sort of pilfered members from other bands or just areas that we, you know, people we've been friends with and who are in other bands that we knew or we would played with in the past and just sort of made it work pretty pretty quickly after that. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, 2009, uh, So It Begins, the EP comes out. And the same year, you're supporting I'm on our Math. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's unusual i think you know what i mean that, that's amazing right like yeah that, yeah. yeah i had a bit of a nostalgia trip at um not fest yeah. i hadn't seen him on a mark in a few years and i sort of had that thing when i was watching him just being like oh man you know like this is like the first band we ever played with into you know that was internationally and um yeah. you know just sort of had memories flooded of the first time we played with them because then a few years later we were lucky on the back of our first album we got to do the national support for them in um yeah. 2012 which is like our first proper tour around the country. So that oh. band sort of holds a lot of, um, yeah, has a special place for us as a band and for, and for me personally, for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Um, And then, yeah, 2011, uh, Bleed the Way, you've got, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but Villa Viljanin? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, how did you get together with him? The, you know, big Finnish band, that's cool. Yeah, it was kind of um funny. It's like Joao was friends with him on MySpace at the time, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. And we're obviously fans of the band. Um, and Joao was just like, oh, I'm just going to hit him up and see maybe if he'd be interested to do a guest spot. And I was like, okay, like, why not? And um, yeah, it was like really easy. He just sort of messaged him and really checked the song out and was just like, yep, sick. And it just yeah. worked out that way. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was just one of those random instances of just like, oh, that was easier than expected. And it, was, it came out really, really cool. It was the first time we ever considered having someone do any guest spots um, mm. on any of our songs. And it is something we've done over the course of the band's career, just because we've always been a very collaborative band and it's it's been great to have friends and, you know, just people that we're massive fans on be part of our music. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, you're talking about being massive fans. You guys have toured with, you know, many bands that I'm sure you're fans of. Um, has there been any kind of, uh, I don't know, have you built some kind of relationship with any of those bands that you've got to hang out with, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I still talk to a lot of the crew from Trivium. Mm-hmm. Um, great dudes. Um, and been been able to meet the guys a few times as well when they've come down. Um, the guys from Insomnium and Omnium Gathering are really good mates of ours, which is awesome. I mean, th- there's a lot more in there as well, but it's just like, you know, some of it's really, uh, you know, just casual saying hi on occasion, like the dudes from Dark, Dark Tranquility, we still chat to you on occasion. Mm. Um, but it's just sort of nice to always have those acquaintances and just like, you know, you spend time with them on the road. And, you know, obviously a lot of these bigger bands will play with so many different bands, but to be able to keep any kind of relationship with them afterwards, especially when it's always been such a positive experience is just really awesome because it goes from just your fans of these bands, you get an awesome opportunity to play with them. And then next minute you're conversing with them as mates. And it just, it really it just changes the complete dynamic of when you're a younger band, especially, and you're still kind of in awe of these bands and playing with them. And then you get to interact with them on, you know, it's like a proper personal level. It just changes your, your um, perspective a, a lot. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Obviously you had other releases, but um, we'll get to the, the new one shortly. Um, but I just wanted to ask about um Catalyst. You did vocals for them in uh what 2020 right is that is that something that's still alive at some point like what's the game yeah i think um ryan and i chatted about what would happen with that but he's got a lot on at the moment and a lot of unreleased music so i think the catalyst stuff is on a a just you know sort of that's been released i think he'll go back to it at some point but like that dude is a riff writing machine so there's just a lot of stuff 
that I think he needs to get out before sort of going back and visiting projects he's you know been able to at least put something out from. Um, if he ever wants to do something with it um, down the track, I'd be stoked. That was a really fun thing to be a part of, especially just doing vocals for something and not being a guitarist. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Um, and talking to other bands, uh, what have you been listening to lately? What's What are you checking out? You know what? That's a really good question. Like mostly it was just like preparing by listening to stuff from the bands at NotFest just because that was like the last thing I went to. And for me, a lot of the time, like working in the studio, I'm basically just listening to a lot of Aussie metal for the most part. Um, recently been listening to a lot of Voyager again. Um, oh, cool. Sabaton, Trivium, um, The New In Flames. That was sick. I was stoked to finally spend some time listening to that album. That's amazing. Um, yeah, just not heaps of st- things, but I-, I tend to be the kind of listener where... Um, uh, sleep token actually is probably probably a good point um usually because i'm working on so much music whether it's mine or you know working with bands in the studio it takes me a long time to catch on to new music so i usually wait until enough people have nudged me and been like have you listened to this yet have you listened to this yet and then you know at some point i'm like okay well i've had enough friends recommend it to me who think i'll like it i should probably go out and listen to it um and sleep token was one of those bands i just like you know uh no pun intended but kind of slept on them for a while and then was like okay i should really check them out Everyone's banging on about them. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, th- these guys are sick. So, yeah, yeah, I tend to just be, I get a little bit more obsessive when I find something I like instead of just listening to heaps and heaps of new things. It's just I don't think my brain can, like, keep that much information in it anymore, especially not musically. Yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> I'm talking about recording other bands. How long have you been work- doing that for? How long have you been working at a studio, you know? Um. Been over. I've nearly been here specifically in this place um, yeah. for ten years, so I've probably been doing it for about twelve yeah. since I sort of started doing it. So uh, it's been a it's been a long run so far, but um, I, I feel quite lucky with that. It's you know, it's 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 literally my livelihood and whatnot, and it's 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 awesome. Like it's not only awesome to work with bands and just you know grow professionally, but also I get a lot of influence from the bands I work with. So yeah. a lot of the time I'm just like yeah. watching them do cool stuff. And I'm like, I need to steal that. That's sick. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, and sometimes if there's specific tricks or things I've learned from a band, I'll always point out to them if I've managed to incorporate it into, into my own music, I'll just be like, Hey, you know, that little cool thing. I'm like yeah. little throwback. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. man. Um, so obviously, uh, yeah, the new EP portraits out, um, April 20. Uh, you guys released what four singles first, right? A couple of last yep. year and a couple this year. Um, what made you decide to sort of drip feed it that way? Was what was the choice behind that? So a couple of things. Like one, I think that's the way to do it these days in general, whether it's an album or an EP. Like mm. some people have that argument of like, oh no, albums are dead and all that or whatever. I just completely disagree because I love the idea of you know a collection of music that is almost like a time capsule for bands. I feel like if you're yeah. just writing singles it gets stale after a while because you don't have like a context of what you're doing different. And it's always like you live and die by the sword of, well, we didn't like this single that someone released and then they drop off. I just, I don't like that way of doing things. I, when we, when we discussed portraits, we actually wanted to do it years and years ago. We just never got around to it. And now with new members in the band and stuff and sort of being at the point we're at, it was like a perfect time to do it. So everyone wrote their song and we just wanted to treat it like, even though it was a collection of songs that go together on this EP, it was fun for us to treat them like individual releases because they are specifically kind of self-indulgent, very expressive individual songs that each member's written. So this was a really sort of perfect way to delve into that on our own. It's the first independent we release we've done since before Bleed the Way. Um, mm-hmm. It was just a fun experience to get around to, I don't know, just doing it on our own terms and doing it in a way that we were comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Was that um, a choice? Were you, did you guys decide, yeah, we want to kind of do this ourselves for the next yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Like, especially after, like, lockdowns and everything and just, like, going through the process of, I guess, like, relearning to love our instruments and the band again. You know, like, I imagine a lot of bands probably had that chat during lockdown of just, like, you know, is, are we going to be able to continue after this and all that sort of thing? And we, we definitely had that chat ourselves, um, but we very quickly realized that all of us were in it for the long haul which is great like you know it was like the best outcome we could ask for and because of that i think we wanted to just sort of like recapture the fun part of writing and whatever like you know we don't need to tour but we can if we want there's no expectation except for ourselves um 
But realistically, even though the release is like independent in terms of like our own rights and releasing it how we want, um, Anti Vinyl Vinyl Club are sponsoring the limited run of vinyls for this album. So there'll be no physicals like CDs or anything except for the vinyls. And then obviously it'll be available digitally through our Bandcamp and Spotify and all that. But they really loved what we were doing as a concept and they wanted to do like, you know, there's like two or three cool different um, designs on the vinyl and they're all limited. And they just, they really ran with this cool idea of just releasing it as a really limited special thing. And I think for this release specifically, that works really well because it is such a, you know, and I, I say self-indulgent in like a, um, we're just glad people like what's come out so far, but we really did it for our own enjoyment and I guess um, just our own little fix after going through what, you know, we all went through together. Um, and they've just been amazing with it. So it's been really cool. We just got our copies recently of our personal ones and then they kind of surprised us with like a special gold version as well that we didn't know they were making. So it's just been a really fun process and it has just been really fulfilling and, um, I don't know, re-energizing, I guess, is really, really it. Mm. Yeah, I can see it behind you, the, uh, the vinyl copy. Right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I finally got my vinyl shelving up in the studio. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Um, so you're saying, yeah, the, the idea of everyone writing and stuff, it, it is quite eclectic mix, the singles so yeah. far, they still all have the Orpheus Omega flavor, you know, but, um, yeah. how did that work? Like did, with, when someone wrote the song, were they sort of in charge of arrangements as well? Or yeah. like, how did that sort of work? Yeah. So pretty much like, it, it was pretty much like, you can ask for as much help as you want or don't want. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, like I had most of a song finished I pretty much wrote most of my, the bones of my song first out of everyone because I just had a very specific idea in mind. And, and you know, it was specifically to have Andy Gillian involved because when we discussed, you know, you can do it with anyone kind of thing. It was like, you can have guests, you don't have to have guests. It was, yeah. again, there was no real blueprint for it. It was just go ham. And um, so I started writing my one and got Andy to do the, orchestrations first before he got involved doing vocals and solos because everyone knows Andy for his guitar playing and I really wanted to lean in on the other things that he's amazing at um and then when I showed the band just the first rough sort of arrangement that everyone really took it and ran with their own songs so it kind of came down to you know we'd have most of the song finished and then it was like hey I I think I'm missing a bit of this this and this can can you guys help really just get it over the line. And it was nice because we got to put our egos at the door in the sense that there was no reflection on us for each person's song. All we had to do was help them get their vision down. You know, it wasn't like an Orpheus vision. It was each individual person's vision. But obviously, because we are the members we are, there is going to be those little, I guess, Orpheus-isms yeah. in the songs. We can't, you can't avoid that. You know, we've, we've got a sound to a degree. Um, and it was kind of cool because we were worried about if they were going to sound too weird together but like yeah. once we got them you know in a template when we we're just recording the demos it was so strange to hear these five different songs actually sound cohesive together and it was i think that's a testament to the writing between the five of us now as, as a unit which was really good yeah that's cool um and the the videos so far all have kind of have a different flavor too how did they come about was it the songwriter kind of in charge of that or did someone from the outside make those things um, everyone kind of had their thoughts on their own video clips. And then, uh, Leon's definitely taken a lot of charge on the video stuff. He's been great with that. And yeah. Kez has been great with a lot of the editing as well. So we have a pretty solid team. Um, our, our director and producer, Radley, who's done most of them, uh, yeah, he was, he would have, he's done within these walls, um, or dissimilate destruct with Kez and also the prophecy. Um, they just, they know what we want and, all it takes is us having a rough idea and then they kind of just run with it. And, and Leon's been really good and on point in terms of taking our ideas and I guess turning them into something doable as well. Yeah. Um, you know, again, because we've sort of done this on the back of no real um, touring and stuff. Like we did the Bellacore tour last year, but that was sort of like making up for a lack of all the tours we'd done. So we pretty much just were like, okay, how much can we actually afford to do and how can we get these ideas to work without necessarily breaking the bank? So that was also part of the consideration as well. And, and he's, he just did a great job of like coming up with, all right, well, here's this idea that you have. That's sick. Here's how we do it with the budget we have and how we make it actually look um, convincing. So I've been really stoked with them because I don't like doing video clips. And it's not, in a, like, it's not that I don't like the video clips. That's just not something I'm good at. So I love when everyone else takes charge. I just show up. 
I don't be a part of it. And then when I see it at the end, I'm just like excited because, you know, I always do all the mixing and stuff. So I kind of get bored of that part. So the video clip stuff is like as, as, as hands off as I can be with it means I get to be more excited by it at the end. Yeah, that's cool. I'll, yeah, I'm a sucker for a video clip. I think it's it's a cool way. Yeah, to, I know. mean, I see, like I know some bands actually just like yeah, we're not you know we don't really like doing video clips or we don't really do them. And I'm like, it's such a cool element to the music though. It's like yeah. it's like a comic book. You know, you've got the you know you've got the writing and the and the words and the story, but you've got the visual element to to hmm. to match. You know, I I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I love watching a good video clip. So yeah. Um, I read that um your live performance for this one, you've got a really specific design in mind. Um, do you mind telling us a bit some of that? What the idea is there? So look, we're definitely trying to bite off more than we can chew, I think, for this one. But some of the stuff we're trying to implement is a video, an audio visual component on the live set that goes along with the show. Okay. So we're trying to make that work at the moment, which is, I guess, the best way to put it is being able to include all the guests, even though they're not there. Sure. Um, yeah. So we're trying to do some cool stuff that we've done some testing. It's janky as hell, but it works. So we're keen for like, you know, reiterating through that until the show. And then hopefully on hopefully on gig night, um, everything goes well. But I think it'll be pretty special for everyone who, who's there. I'm really keen for it. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm um, just talking about writing, like, uh, obviously, when you started out, you weren't playing massive shows. And now you've played in front of like, a lot of people a lot more than back then. Um, do you think that affected the way you wrote as you sort of went on? I'll, I'm going to say yes, because I think anyone who says no is probably full of crap. Yeah. Um, in a, I think it's more that it makes you focus a bit more because you're always going to write songs that are specifically for yourself in the way that you're like, okay, here's this like journey of a song and I don't know if anyone's going to like it, but we wrote it and we love it and that's great. And I think that's like usually, you know, usually you end up with like half an album worth of that when you're writing an album. But at the same time, when I'm writing something, I like to think of it as like, if I'm in the crowd, is this song going to make me go off? Hmm. And that's kind of something we've, you know, as we started playing bigger shows, we just, you know, we always like cycling our set. We don't like playing the same set all the time, which, you know, it gets boring. So we kind of were just cycling through songs. And after a while, you kind of saw which songs were like really going, you know, which yeah. ones people were singing in the first few rows, which ones um, had the circle pit at the start. And you kind of do keep that in mind when you're writing, because at some point it's like songs hit certain beats or certain emotional um, points. And when you have them in mind, it's like, okay, but where do I want that in this song? You know, what's it going to initiate? What am I trying to get across? So sometimes yeah. live, you want that really heavy song that makes everyone just, you know, the slow head bang, right? Like you've got yeah. that that vibe. Sometimes that lasts a whole song and that's the song in the set. That's just that big, somber, heavy one that just leaves you kind of going, damn, you know? And then there's the other one that's that ridiculous upbeat one that you're just like, it's circle pit time, you know? So I think it informs you. It doesn't make you write specifically for that response, but it's when you know those little moments come up in a song, you might maybe elaborate on them a bit more or you might um, yeah. lean into it a bit harder. I think that's how we've approached it anyway. Like, we don't tend to write a song because we want something. We tend to, you know, you, like most bands, I imagine, you might write a riff or a theme or a melody and it gives you a certain emotion, so you write around that. But as you're writing around that, it's also the thing in your head of, like, how's this going to translate? So yeah. I, I think it definitely has had an effect on our writing, but I, I think from the responses we've had so far, I think it's been for the better and it's definitely hasn't lost us any fans from what I can tell and yeah. it's nice that most people have continue to comment on like, you know, they've been fans for ages and they've enjoyed watching our music progress. And I think that's as much of a, um, I guess, acclamation as you can get yeah. from, from other people externally. No, that's cool. Definitely. Um, and obviously you, um, I'm guessing you're recording the band. Um, what's the, what's the sort of go with, uh, you know, mixing and trying to get that final sound? Is everyone in your ear, like turn the bass up or whatever? Or are you kind of like, nah, this is what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hard <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone everyone thinks they're objective until it's about their instrument um <laughs> i tend to have like a rule a lot of the time where um one everyone has to agree on notes before they come to me i don't listen to any individual person because you know a lot of the time you'll get a note where the drum is like the snare's not loud enough and then someone else in the band's like i can't hear the vocals because the snare's too loud and you're like all right yeah. so who do i ignore yeah. um so i we have a pretty good system now which is good and then with this, with portraits specifically, it was more about the person whose song it was who dictated 
what the mix was going to be like, which makes sense because like they have that vision for the song. Whereas when it comes to our like albums and stuff, it's definitely more of a collaborative effort when we do notes and like what we want out of the mix. Like I try to let the music decide what it wants to be. You know, I never try to force a mix to sound like anything. So that's, I think worked in my favor, just whether it's with even Orpheus or any other band I work with. And then from there, it's like, once you get that first draft together, you kind of know which direction you want to, finish it all off in um portraits came together pretty quickly but there's just a lot of elements on it and a lot of layers that took like the automation took a lot of time like just getting the right volume levels of certain vocal parts or like certain guitar bits as opposed to the overall sound it was pretty quick for each song we you know the songs were very clearly uh telling me what they needed so to speak so yeah that's cool and so we've had the four videos is it five five tracks is that right yep Yep, and the so, fifth track itself will be out um, on April 20th with the EP. We haven't had a chance to film that one yet. We have everything sorted and ready to go, but we figured we're not going to rush it. There's some extra stuff in this one that I think is going to take a little while longer and be a bit more meticulous. And when we got Bjorn from Soul Work to, to um, feature on this one, cool. he ended up doing a lot more than we expected, and we actually have a lot of footage of him doing stuff. So we really, we just thought that we were going to have a little bit to work with, which would have been great anyway. But um, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised when the song's out, just, I guess, how much of a band member he is within the song, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because of that, um, and because of what he did for us in terms of footage um, for a clip, we kind of, the scope has grown bigger than what it originally was. So yeah. I'm hoping that we can um, get that done after the gig just because we're kind of focusing on that. Um, I'm yeah. getting married on the weekend, so my, yeah. my, Congrats, my brain's yeah. been, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. way, way elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so we've got it all there. We just need to execute that. And I, it's one of those things we've learned to be better at, which is just not rushing things. Yeah. Um, we probably could have had it done for the release date, but I don't think we would have been happy with it. So it's, um, it's definitely um, teaching us how to be more patient about doing things because we released – the first track off Portraits back in July, I think, just before mm. the Bellacore tour or whatever, somewhere around that. And so, you know, by the time this is out, it's like almost a year across five songs. But at the same time, it feels like it was yesterday when we released Within These Walls. So it's pretty cool to to do it the way we have because even though it's been quite a long time, it still doesn't even feel quick. It feels like we've managed to bash through a lot. So I think that's something for us to keep in mind move, moving on as well. Yeah, that's cool. And um, what do you see coming up after, you know, after this next part of the EP? Like, do you think an album's next? What's the plan? Yeah, we, I think at this point we can, we can uh, front up and we've definitely been writing. Um, we've, we've got a lot of um, ideas and riffs and things. Like, I think Portraits was a really good way to get our own individual expressions out. And, uh, but with the next sort of thing we've been writing, I think it's very obvious as a group, what the vibe is of the album, which is awesome. I feel like it's 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 probably heavier than I was expecting us to go coming off of portraits. Mm. Um, but it's it's really cool. Everything that we've sort of got together so far just feels very organic. So I'm pretty excited for when we get to dig into that. Hopefully it'll be like mid-year we can really start putting our focus on that. Definitely would love to get an Australian tour organized, uh like like a full Australian tour. Um, obviously getting to do it with Balakor was, was absolutely awesome, but we also unfortunately had to cancel a whole bunch of shows with Triple Kill that were organized for around Australia just because of constant lockdowns, constant postponements. And it was just like, just unfeasible to make those shows work. So yeah. really want to get an Australian to it before the end of the year. That would be sick. I think, um, that's always really motivating before we go into album time as well. Yeah. No, fair enough, man. Cool. Okay, well, look, I hope you make it over to Perth, and you know, before the year's out. Um, I would absolutely yeah. love that. It's been way too long since we were back, so. Yeah, no, sick, man, cool. Awesome. Chris, thanks for your time. Hey, have a good one, man. Dude, you too. Thank you so much for having me. So easy. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude.